Okay, let's continue on. So we have looked at our basic settings of how to actually show the background color. So this has been toggled now. We also have this big option, which I want to take time to illustrate is this grid. Now, if you work in Rhino, you will use this grid quite often because this is basically always telling you where you are in your two dimensional space. You can use these construction planes to actually draw geometry. So you have to use them to orient yourself. And that's why we want to understand how we can actually custom preview them or custom design them in a way that we like it, like it and that we have control over it, right? So if I would just simply delete quickly my box here and I will put this guy back into my panel here. This could be a little bit tricky to do. So I'm just going to close it to be honest. Go to my gear again, hit the display. I have my display here now. I bring it more or less where I position it where I want it to be and now I have again this option I could go to color and say black for instance and now you have a black background okay covered that good let's continue on with the grid so depending on which view you are in your viewports you could actually see that you're in the top you have your grid displayed in the front and the right you have your grid displayed now these are construction planes that means i'm going to make a separate videos about the construction planes and a new feature called one view in rhino 6 so check that out it's coming soon now let's look at again i'm going to dive into my perspective zoom a little bit out so you can actually see the grid and what we can do with it now there are two ways to actually alter the appearance in rhino the first one that you want to actually access is to say options just type in options and then you will get this pop-up window with well this is like the main option bar that you want to look at you can actually control anything regarding to rhinoceros with this option tab now i will not of course show you everything that you can do here it is literally the main options that rhino has embedded and of course you can control anything the one thing that I want to show you in Rhino 6, you will find the grid settings in grid. So here, the third position from the top, you can see what is currently your grid settings. And the first thing you can see is apply grid changes to, which means all viewports are active viewport only. Now, what does that mean? If I go back to my overview, so I'll just cancel that for a second, go to overview, and I have my perspective. I am in my perspective, so that's activated, not top. I hit options and if I go back to my grid you can see I can either do that for all of my viewports or just for the active viewport which is perspective it's also telling me that so let's do it for all of the viewports and I can go here now and say my grid lines now what are my grid lines now starting from my origin point you can see that I have my x-axis and my y-axis right now from that I will have my n number of grid lines that will go from my axis. So let's say my Y axis, I have 10 lines actually that go from that into the X direction and on both sides that has been done. The same can be said for the X axis on both sides in the Y direction. They are basically lines copied 10 times in each direction. Now I can control that by basically saying, okay, I actually want 20 so I can double my grid lines. And this is literally for you and for your model space to just work and have your orientation. If you need those units to be displayed, that's how you would control them. Now, if you have a very large scale plane, you could just type in thousand and this will go now literally a thousand units. So your model might be relatively big and this is in meters right now. So I can always adjust my units, but that's a different topic. So let's say a thousand is a little bit much. Let's say 10 is actually fine. I can work with that. And then you can say my minor grid lines. Now, minor grid lines, again, are these guys here, right? So if I say two, you can see that my grid has been scaled up. That means that now a unit is not one unit, but it's actually two units. Two meters is one unit. So this point to that point is actually two units. Of course, if that's the way you want to work, you can adjust that. You can actually, you know, change that at any given point you can actually go even lower so you could say hey my minor grid lines are actually uh, one or 0 0.1 but in most cases you want to work with one the unit one and now you could also have major lines every now that is for you to have a better understanding of the space that you're working in just to have a visual division of your units and as you can see here you have this little darker line 
yeah and this darker line comes in with every fifth unit that has been displayed in your viewport now you could change that again you could say every every unit is actually a major line you could say two then you have these little darker lines every two units or you could also say hey actually 10 and if you bring in some more subdivision you can see then this is now your cluster let's say of the major lines okay so that is how you can actually set up your grid you can also say what you want to see what you don't want to see right so if i go to my perspective here i could say hey show grid lines yes no i don't want to see them actually so don't show them show grid axis so maybe i don't want to see my x and y grid axis right and i could change in my display the z axis so show that or i could say hey i don't want to see this world icon anymore in my viewports and i could turn that off now grid snap as the last thing that i want to show you here is interesting enough because in the default it will be set to one now this has to do something with your o snap functions here as you can see o snap here but you have also this grid snap option now if you don't have it on i would say just go down here put it on and what we can do i will go into perspective now and say point right and now you can see my grid snap is activated and it will snap to my grid that's what it's doing in every one unit it will actually catch those corner points of my imaginary rectangles here and snap to them which helps me to draw if i'm using the unit system now sometimes you want to custom define your unit or grid snapping right so the one thing that you could do is type in options and change that you want to say hey i actually want to have 0.5 or 0.5 that is so it will also catch now the midpoints if you want our imaginary midpoints and again i could just go to point and now you will see it will catch of course my uh, my normal grid snaps but it will snap it will also snap in the mid of that so that is basically how you can define that your grid snap is actually catching different values that you give him now if i bring in back options we can see that now we have understood the grid quite a bit so i will just go back to my settings that i actually like and that is one option how you could do it you could also what you can do is just type in grid this will launch um, your command history and you can see that now you can have all the settings that we just did with bringing up the option pop-up window we can do actually now in our command line easily so we have the snap spacing we could adjust that what we just did i could again say 0.5 and uh, type enter i could say major line spacing to two enter you can see the scaling up of my uh, grid display there i could say my major interval again to 10. i could go to extend and say 100 and show grid yes no as you can see and of course i can just play on with that the nice thing now is that also and of course i can just control here what i want to see what i don't want to see and also apply to active viewport or all viewports if I'm satisfied, I'll just press enter. I go back here and you can see now that everything has been updated. And if I want to see the overall spacing of my grid regarding the four viewports, I can hit this icon here called four viewports. And if I press it with the right mouse button, it will go to the default view of it. And then I can always trace back my default view. So let's say I've been, you know, going somewhere here i wanted to do something here i wanted to do something here in my top etc like let's say i want to do something here and i actually want to get back to the default setting that i had to gain back control over my viewports that's the button i would press to actually have the default setting back so thank you very much and look out for the new beginners tutorials that are going to be coming out for rhino 6 and i hope you enjoyed it if you like this please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel thank you very much see you the next time